Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. The f you say to me, you little s <laughs> You shut up when I'm talking to you! You shut your mouth! Hello, friends. My name is Dante, and today, I tried to beat Elden Ring with nothing but my fists. Maidenless runt. I commend your spirit, but alas, none shall take the throne. The rules are simple. I can only use my fists. Summons are not allowed. Multiplayer is not allowed. Magic, Ashes of War, if it's not my fists, it's not allowed. No buffs and no items either. Everything was against me. I didn't know it at the time, but I was about to spend the next 70 hours in complete agony. There are 13 bosses I have to get through before I have the right to call myself Elden Lord, and each one is more difficult than the last. 13 bosses to get through in the lands between. Each and every one is terrifying. Some seem to be able to have infinite combos, while others are able to crush people with just a flick of their wrist. We have Margit the Fell Omen, Godric, the Red Wolf, Renala, Godfrey, Morgit, Fire Giant, the Godskin Duo, Malekith, Horlu, Radigan, and the Elden Beast. Will I be able to do it? And most importantly, will I be able to find myself a maiden by the end of this? Let's find out. So I began my long journey inside an unwelcoming cave that reeked of death. I didn't know how I got there or what the hell was happening. I just knew I wanted to get out of there. The path seemed straightforward enough at first. <gasps> I didn't know if the guy was hostile or friendly, so I decided the best way to find out was to plunge my fist deep into his unguarded prostate to see how he reacted. Apparently, he didn't like that very much. The fight began. At least, I think it was a fight? I was only doing two damage per punch, so it was more of a tickle fest than anything. As I made my way through that disgusting cave, taking a full minute to kill each enemy for a measly 11 souls each, I came across my first fellow human. I was so relieved, until he started trying to kill me. Why? After finding out that this guy was pretty well invincible, I got out of there. This whole place was creeping me out and I had had enough. Soaked in my enemy's blood, I walked through a wall of mist and came across yet another fellow human being who wanted me dead. It seemed his death was my key out of the place, and so the battle began. I couldn't believe my eyes when I realized just how little damage I was dishing out to the first boss of the game. Yet, when he got a good hit off on me, it took away a quarter of my health. Death after death after death after death. My brain was reaching its limit. I couldn't do it. This guy was way too overpowered. And then finally... I did it. My heart rate was through the roof and the adrenaline coursing through my veins gave me the symptoms of an Alzheimer's patient, but I freaking did it, boys. I got through the tutorial. I was feeling great. Elden Ring was easily a 10 out of 10 and I knew my money was well spent. And who's this? A man who wasn't trying to kill me on sight? You are maidenless. The fuck? Now, it was clear to me that my bare fists weren't gonna cut it. I didn't feel like spending seven hours on every single boss, and it wasn't against the rules to seek out more efficient ways to become Elden Lord. As I pondered what I was gonna do, I came across Lord Philip for the first time. This guy was a real sweetheart. He was full of good advice, and was even willing to sell me goods and services for the souls I collected on my journey. Lord Philip let me know that there was a special class of weapon called Fist Weapons that gives one the ability to do more unarmed damage. Getting my hands on some of these would be crucial to my success, but... I only accepted weapons that actually looked fist-like. For example, the guitar or the veteran's prosthesis? Sorry, but duct taping a kitchen knife to your wrists doesn't all of a sudden make that unarmed combat. No, my limits were that as long as you could look at something and be like, yeah, I'd call out a fist weapon, I was good to go. So at the end of the day, I decided I'd only be using the spiked castus and the star fist. The only problem was, I didn't know where these things were. As I sat there pondering what to do next, Lord Philip called me over. Turns out, there were actually some decently strong fist weapons in the northeast, nestled somewhere in the lands of Caled. The Lord had a cousin there who sold many trinkets, and among those was a single spiked castus ripe for the picking. I thanked him for his generous advice, marked the location on my map, and began the seemingly short adventure. Why the f did everything want to kill me? I literally had armies of guys chasing me and packs of wolves ambushing me from the treetops. Finally, after what seemed like three marathons later, I had finally lost them. <sighs> I was surrounded by nothing but beautiful scenery and silence. Oh? Is that a maiden I hear? It was time to go into Prince Charming mode. I climbed the mountainside, spun around, and found my super hot princess. Huh? Hello? Anyone? Bamboozled again. At first I thought it was a trap, but turns out it was literally just some guy stuck in a hole. 
He asked me to slap his ass as hard as I could to get him unstuck, so I went to work. Smack after smack, groan after moan, and the lad still hadn't even budged. I was about ready to leave, but the guy begged me to continue. Uh, he seemed to be enjoying this a little too much, but after one final uppercut, he was finally freed. He declared total allegiance to me henceforth, and my good deed for the day was complete. Yeah, I didn't know what the hell was happening either. I continued on to the east, avoiding everything the best I could, I eventually made it to the land of Kaled. Now, all I had to do was find Lord Philip's cousin. Ah, oh, there he was. Wait a minute. Yeah, the spiked case just wasn't cheap. Long story short, it took me an hour to figure out that you could sell the little twigs and berries you pick up from the ground for 10 souls each, and after selling the guy a supermarket's worth of roa fruit, the spiked castus was mine. This weapon was insane. I went from doing 2 damage a punch to doing over 68 damage a punch. Admittedly, still not a lot, but a whole hell of a lot better than 2. Not to mention this bad boy hadn't even been upgraded yet, and I was still under level 10. I was pumped and ready to go. Market was my target, and believe me, he'd be feeling the spikes of my castus all the way up into his intestines when I finally got to him. Him. I decided to take a little bit of a breather before doing that though, when all of a sudden, some random maiden appeared before me. She told me her name was Melina and squatted down right next to me. I was about to tell her to piss off and to go find some other gullible simp to do her bit. Oh my. There's no debate that you're the hottest thing to ever walk this earth. Your short lustrous hair and your rambunctious figure define you eloquently. I swear to you, Melena, that I shall be your sword and shield for eternity. As if her looks weren't enough, Melena also had a noble steed for me to use. That would have been nice 20 minutes ago. Whatever. I was off to fight Margit. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. Oh my. There's no debate that you're the hottest thing to ever walk this earth. Give me that! I swear to you, Rani, that I shall be your sword and shield for eternity. Before charging my way up to Margit, I thought it'd be a good idea to quickly test my strength on a smaller boss first. And that boss just so happened to be the Erdtree Burial Watchdog. That's a lot of damage! I had so much power wrapped up in a single glove that I reconsidered my whole journey. The Elden Ring? <laughs> Did I even need such a thing? Surely it would do little more than weigh down my punching arm. I decided to go fight Margit anyway. After all, I could use the practice. Yeah, that's right. Want some soy boy? I totally underestimated this guy. I thought this fight would be a piece of cake, but Margit... Well... Margit made me want to punch a hole through my goddamn wall. The combos, the delays. Oh, I hate this guy. I thought my spiked casus would actually be useful, but it did little more than tickle his ass. And when I did happen to get a chance to get a punch in every 20 minutes or so, this piece of shit would inevitably dodge me. Oh my god, man, I cannot stand this guy. Attempt after attempt and I was getting nowhere. Surely my game was broken, right? It didn't seem possible. I can't fucking do it, man. I quit. <laughs> I've never had so much stress, so much anger, and so much hatred for a single being in my entire life. So, I continued leveling up, finding new strategies, upgrading my fists, finding other big bosses, seeing the most beautiful parts of the continent, and overall becoming a better, more humble person. All in all, I spent over 10 hours scouring the open world before I tried to take on Margit again. And this time, I had more of a fighting chance. Don't get me wrong, the lad was still crushing my will to live, but slowly and over the course of dozens of attempts, I was finally able to put Margit into his grave. But instead of teabagging his grave like I did to most other felled enemies, I paid him some respect. Just kidding, fuck that guy! It was time. Time to speedrun my way through to the end of the game. Surely Margit was the final boss, right? I mean, how much bigger can the map get? Oh my god! Yeah, I still had a long way to go and was pushing 14 hours of playtime. Oh boy. Next on the hit list was Godric the Grafted. I was having a good old time slapping this freak around when all of a sudden, the guy swung at me even though I was behind him, obviously missed, hit his own arm, and then proceeded to cut it off. This guy was batshit crazy! Anyway, would you believe me if I told you I beat him my first try? It's true! I guess I was still fired up from that whole Margit situation. After Godric passed away, his body gifted me the grafted dragon fist weapon, but 
Because it wasn't the Star Fist, I threw that thing in the trash. That's two great enemies felled, only 11 left to go. So of course, in my spare time, I went around upgrading myself, exploring caves, defeating dragons, and getting more flasks and maps. At one point, I even killed six bosses in one hour, which I was pretty proud of. Of course, the game was still excruciatingly difficult, but I really felt like I had a rhythm going, and I was happy with my progress. At this point, I decided that upgrading my fist weapon was a way to go. I wasn't having a super difficult time, but the pitiful amount of damage I was doing was starting to get to me. I began Operation Star Fist. This weapon was waiting for me in the capital, and apparently it was just sitting on some dead body ripe for the taking. Easy, I thought. No problem at all. That was wrong. No matter which way I went, no matter what secret path I thought I had found, nothing seemed to work. Either some crazy boss was blocking my way to the capital, or there was a gigantic wall in my way. Hell, I even somehow magically found a chest in the south of Limgrave that sent me straight to the capital, but upon getting there, I found out that it was pointless. Levers weren't working, portals were inoperable, and my legs couldn't handle the stress of me trying to brute force my way down. What a sick joke. It's like the game enjoyed watching me suffer. This old hag even called me a coward for trying to cheese my way to the capital. Oh, fuck! So okay, I decided to find my way there naturally, without trying to speedrun the game. This happened to bring me to the Rhea Lucaria Academy. <laughs> I was hoping to find some cute wizard girls in the school of witchcraft and wizardry. No, 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 wait, whoa. Of age wizard girls, like McGonagall, okay? Anyway, after making my way through the Academy of Hell, I was able to weaselly my way to the final room. It was a little spooky in there. I didn't know how I was gonna... Um... Y yeah, so anyway, I left. I was there looking for cute wizard girls like Hermione, okay? Not weird slug girls. For the first time in my life, I began slapping women around without feeling bad about it. But it was odd. Ornella's health bar was still full. I didn't know what I was doing wrong, but clearly I had to think of something quick. That's when I noticed something. The slug girls that were singing, when I started beating them into submission, Ronella's crystal bubble began to shatter. Oh! So I continued targeting the creepy ones that sang until Ronella fell to the floor, and then I began smacking her around. She was surprisingly resilient and took the beating like a champ, but once I got her to her second phase, she became more of a problem. Now. I'm not gonna lie, I struggled with Ronella's second phase a lot. I didn't quite understand her patterns, and I also felt like my health and flasks weren't quite up to par, not to mention the puny amount of damage I was doing. I spent a good 30 minutes on her before I decided it was time to move on. As I made my way through Liurnia, I heard tell of a way to get the Grand Lift to work. In fact, it was very simple. I only needed two pieces of a medallion to get it moving. So I took the Grand Lift to the capital outskirts, ran around on my horse panicking for the next 20 minutes as everything tried to kill me, and made it to the outer wall of the city. If I could just slip my way in there, I'd be able to grab the Star Fist, upgrade that baby to the max, and then I'd feel confident enough to take on Ronella and the rest of the demigods. The only problem was the bouncer in front of the club. If I wanted to get into the city, I'd have to beat him first. Now this guy... This guy was harder than most other bosses in the game, at least for me. His phase one was easy enough. In fact, throw me in front of any boss on horseback and I'll beat them first try. It's his second phase that kept getting me. This man would all of a sudden become Thor and start aimbotting me with his lightning. I just couldn't seem to get the timing down in order to dodge his attacks, and because he'd usually one-shot me, this was a real risky fight. One slip up and I'd be done for. I must have tried this fight over a dozen times before eventually reaching my limit and giving up. I was so close to making my way into the city, and yet this final obstacle barred my entry. I wasn't quite ready to face him yet, but I had faith I could beat him if I got a little more training in. So I was off to see Rani. She had a lot of good advice for me and we chatted the night away. You see, she wanted to overthrow the tyrannical Golden Order to bring about the Age of Stars. She believed this would, in turn, give freedom to all living beings in the lands between. Of course, she had made progress on the stream over the years while relying on people like Blythe, the Half-Wolf, and War Counselor Iggy, but she had recently hit a roadblock. Since I was still trying to figure out how to make myself stronger for the fights against the Draconic Tree Sentinel and Renala, I decided to help her. In the meantime, I decided to go to the Table of Lost Grace and chat with all my fellow chums there. That was the first time I had the pleasure of meeting the Dung Eater. His breath wasn't the best, but he seemed to be an okay guy. I even met a lad named Blackguard, and although he was a bit sketchy, we had a good laugh together. I wasn't so sure about the lands between when I first appeared here, but I was really starting to enjoy my time solving hijinks and making friends along the way. In my spare time, I delved into many caves, fought many great bosses, and even joined in on the war cries calling for the death of General Radan. After all this, I was ready to face my trial. I quite literally spent the next hour of my life endless 
endlessly dying and dying and dying, but that wasn't enough to deter me. This piece of trash wasn't going to get off with a stern warning. No, he'd be getting all of his annual prostate exams combined into one massive examination, or my name wasn't Fist Me the Wise. And so, after spending more time on him than I'd like to admit, the battle was finally over. I was euphoric. It was finally done. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Are you kidding me? After all that time strategizing, making myself stronger, and relentlessly pitting myself against that boulder of a man, the door to the capital was blocked off with magic? It seemed the only way to get through the magical barrier would be to kill a demigod. So I went back to Raya Lucaria, beat up a whole school of women, and defeated Renala my first try. I didn't let her get off that easy, though. Before she died, I gave her a free prostate exam. Right up there! Yes! I was high on the fumes of victory and charged my way back to the capital. The only thing on my mind at that point was the Star Fist. This would be the weapon I'd be using until the end of the game, so I was pretty excited to see how it would perform in a fight. And there it was. It was so beautiful. Oh, the colonoscopies I would perform with this would be marvelous. I immediately fast traveled over to Iggy, used all the smithing stones I had saved up since the beginning of the challenge, and admired those mouth-watering stats. 153 plus 43 damage. I didn't know what the 43 meant, but those were both bigger numbers than two, so I was happy. You guys know how it is. For the next couple hours, I went around different areas finding better armor, upgrading my flasks, and continued making myself stronger. At this point, I must have beaten at least 50 bosses, so I felt pretty good about going up against Godfrey. Surprisingly, I didn't find him that difficult. Sure, I died a few times, but his fight actually felt fair to me. Not too hard like Margit, but also not too easy like Godric or Renala. Five bosses down, eight to go. Here, my heart dropped. I was to face Margit again. I cannot stress how much I hate this guy. I keep seeing around the internet that people actually found this guy easy. What drugs are you on? This fight almost broke me. Infinite combo into infinite combo, magic attacks into dagger throws. I felt like I could never get a good hit on him. Eventually though, I started to understand his patterns and worked on whittling down his health until he was defeated. Oh, thank God. What I was about to cross into was the highest difficulty spike I'd ever encountered in any game. The mountaintops of the giants. I felt like I was back to level one. Like. Why are these birds so difficult? And why are there so many bosses casually walking around like they're some kind of easy small enemy? Oh god. Oh, why did I buy this game? Yet again, I decided that instead of trying to force my way through to the end of the game, I'd spend some more time in the lands between trying to get stronger. I was still under level 100, so it wouldn't hurt to boost my stats a little. So without wasting too much of your time here, I defeated Radon on my third try. Yeah, I don't know what happened either. Conquered Nakron, fought the Regal Ancestral Spirit, successfully fought the Twin Gargoyles after nearly throwing my goddamn controller through the wall, absolutely demolished Fia's champions, got some new drip, plowed my way through the Lake of Rot, beat Estelle, though I found him extremely difficult, and finally decided to do my best to make Ronnie's dream come true. To make a long story short, I had to do a lot of subtasks like flipping the Carrion Study Hall, uh, defeating the Shade of Blythe, and acquiring the Dark Moon Ring from Renala. It was this ring that, after a long, long journey, finally brought Ronnie and I together. I was no longer maidenless. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But then... Ronnie abandoned me on our wedding day. My heart was shattered. It was game time. I began my conquest of the mountaintops, and this time, I felt ready. Enemy after enemy fell to my feet, begging for a quick death, and I granted every single wish. Nothing could stop me. I defeated the fire giant on my very first try, witnessed Melina being a complete badass, and started to regret marrying a literal doll instead of a human girl, cried myself to sleep over how difficult the Pharaoh Missoula was, and eventually made my way to the Godskin duo. These guys almost made me quit the challenge. Now. I know what you're saying. Dante, just use sleeping pots on them, or any sleep debuff, really. And to that, I'll refer you to section 4 of the rules, which states that I shall not use any items or consumables. I'm telling you, this fight pissed me off more than any other fight in the game. I've never had a problem fighting the beanpole by himself, but the tub of lard was a completely different story. Not only did he stab me through the pillars, he also used his disgusting body to roll around the floor like a child having a temper tantrum, and I was expected to beat not two, but four of these guys because they kept respawning until the health bar was completely gone. The simple fact that these two enemies were put in the same room together brought their difficulty level to the moon. I know some of you guys probably didn't struggle with this fight, but the way I was going about it was starting to give me late stage dementia. By the grace of God, 
I was somehow able to whittle these guys down enough that the empty health bar insta-killed them. Thank Christ, I never wanted to go through something like that ever again. Well, I was in luck, because Malekith was somehow harder than the Godskin duo. I attempted Malekith multiple times, but his second phase kept getting me. It was clear to me that I wasn't doing enough damage to him in the amount of time I was fighting him. If I could somehow shorten the length of time I was in the arena with him, aka do a lot more damage in a shorter period of time, I could actually just tank most of his hits and send him to Valhalla before he even knew what happened. I began doing research. How could I make myself even stronger than I was? Sure, I was level 126, had 62 hours in the game, and had the best fist weapon in the game, but it wasn't enough. I was doing a piddly 200 damage per punch, and with bosses removing half of my health bar and a single flick of the forehead, I knew something needed to change. That's when I watched a video by Rage Gaming Videos. He had created a build that could essentially one-shot bosses. At this point, I didn't care anymore. I was sick of spending over an hour on every boss I encountered. I wanted the bosses to fear me. I wanted Malekith to kiss my feet and thank me for it. I wanted him to lick my toes. And so the search for my OP build began. I grabbed the Ash of War from Volcano Manor that almost doubled damage on the next hit, went and got the Seppuku Ash of War from the mountaintops, fully upgraded the Claw Mark Seal at the Round Table Hold, grabbed the Claw Talisman from Stormvale Castle, put on Raptor's Black Feathers, and I was finally ready. As a final touch, I used up every single golden rune I had on me, which ended up giving me 385,000 souls, and I leveled myself up to to level 131. Right before I entered Malekith's chambers, I stopped myself. What was I doing? I had already promised not to use anything but my fists, and here I was about to use magic and ashes of war? I sat there for a long time, wondering if it was worth it to sacrifice the challenge for my sanity. Then, I took a look at my flask of wondrous physic. Huh. I had been using the health, regeneration, and some other useless buff to help me out in sticky situations, and found it wasn't overly helpful. So instead, I chose to use the Strength Not Crystal tier, which boosted my damage, and the Spiked Cracked tier, which enhanced my charge attacks. And... Oh no, oh dude, I'm so stupid. I didn't know you could two-hand fist weapons. I've been single-handing everything this entire time, are you kidding me? I was now ready. I didn't use anything I'd spent the last two hours collecting, but the simple fact that I started jump attacking and charge attacking my enemies with a two-handed fist weapon made a massive difference. I was now doing up to 1300 damage per attack and I felt like I finally had a chance to beat this. This was mind-blowing. What would have taken me 30 attempts instead took me less than 10. Malekith had been dominated. From there, I came across Sir Gideon and completely smushed him to the ground before he even knew what was happening. For some reason, he was trying to monologue at me, which made him an easy kill. And so there I was, only three bosses left until I could finally become Elden Lord. One of those bosses was Godfrey. If you looked up the definition of masculinity in the dictionary, there'd be a picture of this guy. Yeah. I destroyed him. My new strat was too good. When I wasn't jump attacking my foes, I was full on charge attacking them with two-handed fists, which was a little too much for them to take. Sure, Hora Lu was a bit tricky and took me a few attempts, but overall I didn't spend longer than 15 minutes on the guy. Man, I was getting tired. Did I really have to get the Elden Ring? I slept. But that was enough dilly-daddling. Rani was waiting for me to finish up, and besides, I came this far. Might as well see it through. Once I got to the door, I began powering myself up. Upon the stars, I ask that Renala, queen of the full moon, bestow upon me the power of which I seek. Flame, grant me strength, but quench upon me golden vow. No, just kidding, I didn't use any of that stuff. I pretty well went in there butt-ass naked. And I was gonna take Radigan out the same way I did everyone else. Jump and charge attacks. I did so much damage it was insane. Was it even a gaming challenge at this point? After one final brutal attack, Radigan was defeated and I was crowned Elden Lord. Wait. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Let's just say I struggled with the Elden Beast a lot. It wasn't so much a hard fight as it was annoying. I basically had to run a marathon anytime I wanted to get a single hit on the thing, and unfortunately it killed me a lot. I tried again and again and again and again, and then finally, after way too many attempts, I had the Elden Beast on its last bit of health. But the mother would not let me kill it. Get back here, you little shit. Ah, oh, God, I hate you. I know in my bones. A tarnished cannot become a lord, not even you.
Every boss that needed to be defeated was done so by my hand, and I was suddenly teleported back to the Erd Tree. Of course, there was only one ending that guaranteed me a maiden, and I chose it instantly. Rani appeared before me, told me that the Age of Stars was now upon us, and pledged herself to me for all eternity. And there we have it! With a total playtime of 69 hours, I beat Elden Ring Fist only without using any summons, multiplayer, items, buffs, magic, or ashes of war. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see some more Elden Ring videos, click the like button and let me know in the comments down below what other challenges I could try. Thanks for watching, check out all the other gaming challenges on my channel, and I'll see you thick boys in my next video. A man cannot kill a god.